This is our final video in the migrating to Bitwig series. And I'm actually recording this one a week later. I got like kind of a nasty cold. So if things sound a lot different, that's the reason for that. So just figured I'd say that at the beginning. And this video is really about um, Bitwig in context. So we have the demo track brought in and I'm just gonna go through some of the ways that you may navigate the interface to make the program work for you. This is ultimately why I purchased Bitwig Studio because I felt confident that I would be able to make music um, the way I kind of want to make it, right? So I'm not going through a bunch of different menus. I can jump from view to view, things of that nature. And the point is, this is not going to be for everybody. Um, a lot of people get very used to making music in their digital audio workstation of choice, and there's no reason to switch to something else if you're not struggling. Uh, but I found that this workflow and just the way the interface can kind of contour to your needs that's kind of a strength of the program, at least in my opinion. Um, if you see it that way, great. If you don't see it that way, that's great as well. So right now we're looking at the most basic of views, okay? We have just kind of our timeline, the arranger view, left to right, nothing is brought up. From here, I can resize tracks, I can adjust automation parameters if I want to do that, and I can change the volume. Uh, if I want other mixing features, I have tons of choices for how I want to mix this track. All right, I could actually do it pretty much exclusively from the arranger view. You're wondering like, well, where are the pan pots? How can I bring those up? The way I like to do it is to kind of select the track and then bring up the inspector. If I double click, you'll see that by double clicking, that actually brings me onto the drum machine. And as I've talked about before, these menus are always changing based on what you have selected. So here we have like this device view in the inspector for the drum machine. And there's a lot of stuff going on in here. If I click on dynamics, it's obviously going to be a lot less. If I then go back out and click on the track, now I have some of my normal expected mixing features that I would, you know, typically see if I was in a mix view, I have the ability to adjust panning. Uh, I have my inputs and outputs here. I also have my send and return amounts to what they call effect tracks, but it's the exact same thing. And I can go down here onto the reverb. And if I double click this guy, here we can see that we also have the ability to send in from the device itself and we can see everything and we have a little contextual arrow which means that on this drum track and this is kind of an interesting thing at least with this built-in uh, device if you also have things with multi outs you can obviously route that very easily if you're working with battery or another type of drum machine but i can expand that and i can actually then send individual channels and we'll talk more about that in a little bit um, obviously i'm just blowing through things here very very quickly but if you want to keep it very simple and very basic and just kind of work from this view you can absolutely do that you don't even need to have your additional device thing brought up here but if you do bring this up you then have additional options here different views that you can look at for this bottom panel so if instead of seeing the device i want to see more of my classic mixer i could bring that up and if i was to bring it up I don't really need the inspector anymore I could get rid of that and this one I can actually bring up and resize and when I bring this up I mean it only will resize up to this high this is a pretty you know common way that you may end up mixing your track if you have a large enough screen um, because if you need to get in there and do things on the timeline you can but you also have your normal mixing controls down here and then these are very customizable you have all of these different things that you can either show or hide so for example like we really wouldn't need to see input and output and we can get rid of that and now from here if i ever need to like look at say the dynamics settings for this i can always still go in here and like double click and it's going to switch me over and if you're working with plugins, it's actually a little bit nicer because then I don't really have to kind of jump back and forth between the two, although I can do that, it will bring it out. And if I want to turn things on and off, I can click the little yellow icon here and I can select multiple ones on the same chain. The one thing that you can't do that I've been complaining about from the very beginning is you can't go from like, you can't select things on multiple tracks and turn them on and off or like deactivate and activate them. And that drives me crazy because nowadays, this is isn't true for everybody, but a lot of people are working with more of the, okay, I'm going to put on some kind of console strip on everything. I'm going to put on some kind of tape machine on everything. And a lot of times you want to be able to select all of those and turn them on and off. And while there's a workaround to do it, it's like way too much work um, in, in, a normal, in a normal setting, especially if you have a lot of tracks in a song. 
or something like that. The other thing you'll notice when we bring up the mix panel is that we also have a couple of these downward arrows. Here is where you can't do it from up here, but you can do it from here. You can bring everything out, um, the individual cells on the drum machine, and you can actually add um, you know, additional plugins here, effects, what have you. And then you have control over the volume and the panning. So that is very nice and something uh, worth talking about and explaining. So you can bring that up from here. You can also go down and you can bring in the automation editor, depending on what you're working with. And I think I may have shown you this already. So if you have, uh, I think this track has automation, you can see that I can bring that up. I can make it nice and big and I can really get in there down and dirty and mess with the automation. And then we also do have here our note editor panel. So if I click on that and I select you know, any of these clips, I have the ability to get in here and I can change things around like so. Um, believe it or not, when you're making music, if you actually, or you know, you're composing, you can flip things around here by using these guys down here. And I could now go in and go into like edit mode. And now it flips things around. It gives me a nice big view of that. And one of the cool things in Bitwig, if like you're making, um, you know, really for any genre, even like pop, and you want to be able to edit multiple like clips at the same time, I can actually view other clips. And of course, these are not overlapping, the drums is going to overlap. And then I can jump in there and I can make adjustments accordingly based on what I have, that's allowing me to be like edited here. Right? Now I can control uh, where that's going if I want to do that. And you can see then we still even have some additional automation controls underneath, which we can hide or show. And there's additional features here that we could get into if we wanted to. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those. I'm just trying to show you that you have a lot of control in here of what you see. And one other really nice feature is that you can even overlay an audio clip, which in this case, uh, I just brought one in so I could show you. So if you're trying to set like really precise timings and you have some groove stuff going on, you can very easily do that by bringing in a waveform display. And then if we want to flip, and in this case, I only have one audio track because this is showing me all of my instrument tracks. If I click on this, it's going to bring me over. And now I'm working in an audio editor and I can make audio adjustments to this if I want to do that. Um, I can't overlay MIDI on top of it, but that's fine. I don't really need to do that. Uh, there wouldn't really be too many uh, applications where I would need to do that. So just some of the things you can do down here. And then we have an, one additional view, which is going to be uh, the mix view. And again, like I guess my point I'm trying to show you is that you can really customize this and, and kind of see whatever it is you want to see down here while you're working without really having to like click all over the place. Um, this is this is where Bitwig to me is has its greatest strength when I'm making music because I can do it the way I want to do it and very easily bring up different menus or whatever. Whatever. The other view we do have access to is the mix view. And now from the mix view, again, you can see how these options and things change. Uh, what's kind of interesting here is that we now see the clip launcher and we'll look at another mode where we can look at the clip launcher, but we have additional controls that we can bring up. We do have a crossfader where we set the track A and B, and then we uh, adjust that from there. Uh, we have all sorts of different modes here. Show deactivated tracks, not really relevant for this. Showing effects tracks, again, not all that relevant here. Um, inputs and outputs to bring up. And we also have a kind of cool feature where we can bring up big meters, and then we can kind of clear everything else out. It's more just an, an aesthetic thing there. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to show you uh, for the most part. Let me get back into the arrange view here. And I guess I should just mention that, yeah, if I double click like on a clip here, it then brings up our clip editor. And now instead of looking at it from track view, we are looking at it from the clip view here. And you can go in and adjust things uh, accordingly as well as uh, clip automation if you want to do that. All right, so let's hit tab and we'll go back out to the arrange view. Let's get rid of this and let's bring up our clip launcher which you can actually work with side by side. So you can have something kind of playing back and, and meanwhile be launching clips. This works very similar to Ableton in that like if I'm playing this back here and I select a different track here, that's now what's playing and it's gonna continue to play the arranger. Of course, there's nothing else going on, so we'll move it up. This is just the beat that's playing. And if I wanna jump back, to what's happening in arrangement, I click this, or if I have multiple things changing up, I can hit the select all, and then it brings me back to the actual arrangement of what's happening. Okay, we can go full view in here. 
If we bring up the inspector, you'll see that we have like a lot of additional views and launching quantization and kind of like doing next actions, all that sort of thing that I've covered in other courses. So if you're not familiar with how that works, you're just gonna have to kind of seek those videos out. And then to record, it's actually very easy. Let's go out to a new section here, hit record, hit play. And it's recording. And you can la launch entire scenes from the top. When you're ready to stop, you just hit stop. And you can see it's recorded all of that in there for you to then edit further, uh, or in this case, probably just go and delete it. And then again, we can go back to arrangement. Um, in this case, I'd actually do it by clicking up here. That does exist for me, which is a nice little feature there. Uh, probably the only other thing maybe worth showing you at this point is just um, how maybe grouping works a little bit, because that was a feature that didn't exist originally. You can just select as many tracks as you want, and you can group them by hitting Command-G or like right-clicking and group. The thing I like about grouping is that when you really start to go deep with it, and like you can go like groups within groups and things like that if you wanted to do it, and obviously name them. Once you do this, you then have the ability to enter into like group isolation modes by clicking up here. And we can just specifically see this group, or in this case, we see the two nested. And then I can go further and just see what exists inside of that group and go back out. That's a feature I take advantage of a lot with drums or with synthesizers. If you're on a smaller screen, that becomes like your best friend. Uh, when you're mixing, you can kind of do that. And again, meanwhile, you could have the mixer panel up the entire time. So uh, that's basically how this works. And if if you're familiar with other terminology, this would be the same thing as busing. I could obviously then go into the group and do group processing like so. And obviously my master processing goes on the master bus, all that sort of thing. So um, hopefully this has been of some use to you. I know that in this video we jumped around a lot, but hopefully you're seeing some of um, the ways that this program works and operates and the logic of it all. So that's going to do it for this series. I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Um, again, this has been migrating to Bitwig Studio, a little mini series. Hope you've enjoyed it and um, have fun making music. Take care.